Well, my inbox has been blowing up this morning. Less than 24 hours since the launch of Search GPT, ChatGPT's own search engine, and everyone's wondering what's going on. Now, this is something that lots of us have been preparing for for a long time. I don't think my opinions on it have been changed particularly, despite spending a couple of hours testing it out this morning. So in today's video, I'm going to walk you through what this means, how I see the future of SEO, or if we're even calling it SEO anymore, how you can rank in ChatGPT search, and just generally, is this the end of SEO or is it a new opportunity? Opportunity. And the answer, as usual, kind of a bit of both. Now, I think, first of all, before you go diving into trying to reverse engineer the new search and try and come up with the algorithm and how it works and how we can break it, I would urge massive caution because everything I'm seeing here really suggests that Search GPT has been very rushed. And I don't blame them for that at all. If I were launching something like this, I would say just launch it, get it out there, ship it, and then learn and tweak as you go once you've got all that real user data. Because what I'm really seeing is that it's very hard to replicate the same scenario each time. So, of course, it's a bit random. It's very hard to see what's going on. So first I put in best SEO in the world with search ticked. So everyone on ChatGPT already has search enabled. You just have to tick this globe at the bottom here, and then you'll basically get a list of results like this. And it depends on what exact keyword you give that kind of triggers different kinds of results. So for best SEO in the world, I got this long list and then sent a message to my friend Carl Roof of High Voltage SEO saying, well done, you've ranked in GPT search already. Uh, but really interesting here how this has all been referenced from Web because WebFX have got their page of the best SEO companies and services. So this is almost like, kind of like Parasite SEO on Parasite SEO. Whoever's ranking number one on Google search seems to therefore influence and provide data for ChatGPT. But my point here is actually, I then went again through the Chrome extension. So ChatGPT is of course aggressively trying to get market share from Google. So therefore provide you with a Chrome extension that means anything you put into your regular Google search will therefore take you to ChatGPT instead. So let's have a look at dental implant near me and it immediately takes you to GPT and you can see it's scraping various sources. And like I say, different searches coming up with different stuff. So in this case, we have a list. Quite often you'll get a map result and it's very similar to Google Maps. I'm not too much of a fan of it because you only seem to get two or three providers, which might not actually be that relevant to you. But for the time being, we've got these three rankings. Let's see how that compares with Google search. So if we put in dental implant near me, and of course, everyone's saying you've got all these ads at the top of Google search. So arguably there's a lot more benefit to be had from GPT search for business owners. But so far, I'm not really seeing much correlation. I think to an extent this could be to do with geotargeting, but of course local search is just one facet of search. But anyway, best SEO in the world. When I first went through ChatGPT and clicked on search, I got this list. But then when I went through the Chrome extension instead, I got more of this search style recommendation result. But again, the WebFX tool is still influencing that output quite heavily. So we have the sources down here, WebFX, Quick Sprout, CNN. So my message here is basically that Obviously, OpenAI are going to be testing a huge different number of ways of ranking in tandem. So I wouldn't be at all surprised if even in a matter of days, you get very different results for different searches. And I think it will take a while to actually get more of a correlation in terms of what that ranking system actually looks like. However, I keep on saying the same thing, but the medium we use for search isn't really what's important here. I don't think search is going away anytime soon. If your roof is linking, you're going to try and find a roofer. If you need a dental implant, you're going to try and find a dentist. And searching on Google is just the modern equivalent of searching through the directory decades ago. But instead of being a, a printed index, it's a digital index. And over the last 20 years, we've had a good idea of how that index works and how to influence it. But let's not forget the Google algorithm has been around for decades and has proven itself time and again to be the best, beating all these competitors like Yahoo, Ask Jeeves, that whole graveyard of copycat search engines that just couldn't compete with Google. And that carried on for a long time, just a few years ago. You could search a really niche query and you would get some tiny little blog that was written five years before on how to fix that particular engine component from your car. And it seemed like if you put that long tail keyword into Google being really specific, you would get a really specific result. That all changed over the last couple of years. I had to remind myself of the name, but this man's got the reputation as the man who killed Google search and it was Prabhaka Raghavan. And this article, the man who killed Google search earlier this year, basically criticized him of focusing on revenue over search result quality. So for a long time, Google had this absolute commitment to search result quality and user experience. It's only quite recently, a lot of us have noticed when we put in that query into Google, the results we get don't really line up with that query anymore. And yet Google is reporting some of its best earnings ever. So it's that classic business cycle of switching to more of a revenue and profit focused emphasis, having built its user base. 
The argument basically being that if the organic results are worse, then more clicks go to the ads. Now, of course, there's been a lot of pushback for this. There's a big viral video just a few weeks ago saying exactly that. And October 2024, he stepped down. So is Google on the back foot? Are they going to be reverting more to the traditional model? I think probably unlikely just because it's worked. They are making more money as a result. But I think this could be a good thing with the rise of GPT search that it could be some healthy competition for Google. So it's actually got to step back because 90, 95% market share is insane. We've had this big legal trial that has branded Google as a monopoly. So actually the threat of GPT search in order to compete with Google is probably a very good thing and will make both companies focus much more on user experience rather than just revenue. But I digress. My fundamental point here is that the Google algorithm has proven itself to be the best for years and years. And really it's not changed much. It's about the relevance of content. In other words, how well does a page or a document address the search intent of that user and prove itself to be authoritative and how many other websites link to it. That was the original Google algorithm drawing inspiration from academic publishing, where as an academic, the more times your paper gets referenced, then the greater your status. So that's how Google works. That's how Google has always worked. And I think it would be very strange if GPT search didn't borrow a lot of those principles that have been proven to work. We already know that GPT is basically like predictive text. Everything it gives you is all based on source data. So all those mentions, all those references, just like the backlinks with Google, is already how ChatGPT works. Now, like I say, I do think it's a bit buggy. I don't think we should be asking a question and then getting three, four results from the same website, same source. So this feels a bit like what it's like when a Google update is going through and all the results are a bit skew if and don't quite make sense for a while. So I think there's a lot of testing going on. This is going to change very rapidly. I would not be at all surprised if they do start to mirror Google results in the near future. So like I say, it's seeming a bit random. Sometimes for a local search, you get a list like this. And then other times you get something more resembling Google's map pack. And you can choose between list or map. All it really does is change the formatting down here. So early days, you know, there's no reviews here, but it could import reviews very easily. The fact you only get one or two options, whereas if you are looking for a service, typically you'll go through and get quotes from five or six providers, or at the very least, just scout out their website before you make a decision. But again, adding a couple more results here, that could happen any time. That's not a big hinderment at all. Now, as I suspected, of course, the search intent is a little weird. And if you're searching for products, then of course there can be limitations on the kind of products you get given. For instance, if I search vape juice, which is a little bit controversial, uh, we get all this information at the top, including health considerations. We do still get some e-com sites, but it's really quite far down. We have to get past all this before we get three e-com sites presented as options. Of course, if we take that further by asking for THC gummies, then this is currently taking my location of the UK into consideration, but of course it's not giving me any e-commerce sites. Let's just try something nice and clean like sauna cabin. Is it going to give me a list of sauna cabin providers? We've got some nice images, that's good. But yeah, again, a long list of information. And then the actual providers, we're only getting three. One of those isn't even linked. Now, the interesting I've seen, thing I've seen across a lot of these results is even when we're searching e-commerce keywords, we are generally getting almost like an old affiliate style article where we've got all this information about the products and how to choose the right product and then some suggestions of the actual products to buy. So it's almost like GPT is becoming the affiliate blogger of a few years ago. Whereas with Google, we've seen a reverse where all the affiliate blogs have been wiped out and you're much likely to get actual e-commerce providers at the top. Now, I'm already seeing several signs that GPT search does really like content websites. Now, I've already mentioned that getting your brand name mentioned more across the web in association with a particular product is very likely going to influence GPT search. So a lot like links, but it can be unlinked mentions as well. And that's nothing new in Google search, we talk about citations, especially with local search, where if you're trying to rank a business on Google Maps, you want the business name, address and phone number distributed as much as you can. And they don't actually have to be linked. The links do help a lot. But I've known plenty of Google business profile experts who will literally go into a tool like GSA or Scrapebox and take that name, address and phone number and just spam it across the internet using comment spam, forums, etc. The more times that set of characters gets referenced around the internet, the better the search result ranks. So even Google does still look at mentions as well. And with linked mentions, we still know that the text around the link is very important, the contextual relevance. Now, in going through all these tests today, trying out different search results, the crazy thing I'm seeing right now is that while a lot of these results, they're very information heavy, very informational, and they will provide a, a source link at the end of each sentence, the crazy thing I'm seeing is 
you might get one or two brands in there that actually provide the product or service, but you're also getting a lot of these content websites. And what I'm seeing is a lot of these content websites are actually my guest posts that I have placed in order to get backlinks for that particular product or service. And yet it's those guest posts that are being referenced in the search GPT result. Now I've anticipated this for some time. We know that the contextual relevance of a link matters, but it also helps if that page actually gets traffic. And if you're going to the trouble of writing an optimized guest post to get that backlink and try and rank it, then you might as well actually make it look like some proper publicity that says this company is the best provider of this product. And so we're getting all these articles across the internet for Google purposes, but there's always been that sense that this is probably the way to manipulate GPT search as well, because we're getting all those mentions around the internet. Google already used this to an extent using its search quality rater guidelines, where teams of people around the world will manually check in on your website, and they're told to do what's called reputation research, where they basically want to see what the internet says about your brand. So this can't really be done algorithmically, but from a manual standpoint, there's literally an SOP, a guide that tells them they are told to search your brand name, but without looking at your website, and look at all these other news and articles around the internet to assess your reputation. So that's why I believe in link building, not just for today's Google rankings, plus that reputation research additional PR step, but also getting all those brand mentions out there in order to influence search. And that seems to be happening already. So if you are interested in that, you can click the link below, go to seojesus.com slash apply. There's a few case studies here, and then you can fill in the application form there and we'll see if you're a fit. So overall key takeaways. Well, I think some healthy competition for Google is a good thing. Hopefully Google will start to consider going back to more of a focus on user experience rather than some of the search results we've seen more recently. I think as it stands, GPT search, there's huge potential there, but of course it's so early, it's so new, it doesn't really feel like it works that well. I don't feel confident that I can reliably get a list of 10 products when I search for a product. And it's also quite interesting that while well, Google seems to really double down on phasing out content sites and instead trying to look for actual businesses, so e-com products, service pages, things like that, ChatGPT still seems to be focusing much more on content sites, which kind of makes sense since the whole basis of ChatGPT is basically predictive language. So it seems to be looking very much at the language on the page rather than a lot of these other signals that Google has been factoring. But again, that could be patched up very quickly. Sometimes I get a long list of information and then maybe three suggestions. That kind of experience is not going to make me stick around. But I also think that with the, the sheer coverage and the scale of OpenAI, they're going to be able to fix that very quickly and get much better at working out what the users actually want. However, I would not be at all surprised if that result then very closely re resembles Google search because it's been their business model for decades now. So if OpenAI is trying to reinvent the wheel, yes, the actual formatting and how the information is presented to you is different, but I really don't think a list of products or services is going to be that different. I think it's probably going to be ranked based on mentions and backlinks. So overall, I'm not that worried. And if Google does decide it needs to compete harder, then maybe we might see a reduction in a lot of the ads real estate that's taken up at the top of every search result. And let's not forget, we've had a really good ride with Google because of that huge market share it's got. We've only had one app to really reverse engineer. Since the helpful content update, loads of publishers have been coming back saying, actually, they're still doing really well on Bing and other search engines. Now, let's not forget that Bing and Internet Explorer, most of us at the rock face of technology haven't touched those for a long time. But for years, even before the newer versions of Bing and Internet Explorer, those were still quite major channels because they were the first choice of corporate computers and lots of older people were using them as well. And both corporations and older demographics do tend to be bigger spenders. So in certain niches, the old days of Bing and Internet Explorer were actually better channels for them. So I don't think Google is going away anytime soon. There's always a sense of black and white. It's either going to be Google, it's either going to be ChatGPT. I'm sure plenty of people will start using GPT search, but habit is a massive thing. Loads of people are just going to carry on Google e with Google, even if it's not the best option for them, arguably. So for now, don't panic. Keep doing what you're doing. I think the fact that guest posts I've written are now ranking for commercial queries in search GPT is really encouraging. It's showing that GPT does actually prize content. It probably is looking at backlink authority because obviously we're posting these guest posts on high domain authority sites. So for now, this is all a big unknown. It's going to keep on changing, hopefully keep on improving. I wouldn't be surprised if it improves towards the same end as Google search. But in the meantime, Google search is still working. It's going to keep working for a long time. There's not going to be this big overnight switch or replacement. So I'd say focus on what you do know. That's the only way to succeed. So keep doing SEO, keep focusing on Google, but just be prepared. Keep thinking about 
what could this mean for GPT search and keep an eye on it. Because I think in the early stages of technology like this, there's always going to be these little hacks and loopholes. It's going to be like going back to Google 15 years ago, where you could do all the black hat stuff that still works really well. I'm sure over the next couple of months, we're going to have lots of interesting quirks and insights into how you can really use search GPT to your advantage. But like the early days of Black Hat Google, a lot of those are going to get patched up very quickly. So focus on the fundamentals, good product, build lots of links, have a good website with quality information on it. And I wouldn't be surprised if in a year or two, maybe even further into the future, you're ranking well on Google, but you're also ranking well on Search GPT.